Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So a new study out of the Buck Institute for Aging seems to have spawned the 10th, the next measurable hallmark of aging. Uh, enough waffling off me. Let's jump straight in the presentation and see what this new study has got to offer. This is a review of a piece I read that was penned by the Buck Institute for Research on Aging and published in Nature Aging. In it, they introduced the concept of inflammation as the 10th hallmark of aging. And there are links in the description below to the articles I read to compile this presentation. Researchers from the Buck Institute and Stanford University have created an inflammatory clock of aging named iAge. iAge measures inflammatory load and predicts multimorbidity, frailty, immune health, and cardiovascular aging. Using deep learning, a form of artificial intelligence, in studies of the blood immunome of 1,100 people, researchers identified a modifiable chemokine associated with cardiac aging, which can be used for early detection of age-related pathology and provides a target for interventions. Chemokines are a small family of cytokines. David Furman, PhD, an associate professor at the Buck Institute and senior author of the study said, standard immune metrics, which can be used to identify individuals most at risk for developing single or even multiple chronic diseases of aging have been sorely lacking. But bringing biology to our completely unbiased approach allowed us to identify a number of metrics, including a small immune protein, which is involved in age-related systemic chronic inflammation and cardiac aging. We now have a means of detecting dysfunction and a pathway to intervention before full-blown pathology occurs. According to the first author of the study, Nazish Saeed, MD, PhD, and assistant professor of vascular surgery at Stanford Medicine, the study identified the soluble chemokine CXCL9 as the strongest contributor to eye age. And he said, we showed that CXCL9 upregulates multiple genes implicated in inflammation and is involved in cellular senescence, vascular aging, and adverse cardiac remodeling. Adding that silencing CXCL9 reverse loss of function in aging endothelial cells in both humans and mice. Results from the initial analysis, which included information from 902 individuals, were validated in an independent cohort of centenarians and all-cause mortality in the Framingham Heart Study. Professor Furman says, when it comes to health and longevity, the age of a person's immune system certainly trumps the chronological information that can be derived from their driver's license. On average, centenarians have an immune age that is 40 years younger than what is considered normal. And we have one outlier, a super healthy 105 year old man who lives in Italy, who has the immune system of a 25 year old. In a second study, results involving cardiac health were also validated in a separate group of 97 extremely healthy adults aged between 25 and 90. They were recruited from Palo Alto in California. Professor Furman said that researchers found a correlation between CXCL9 and results from pulse wave velocity testing. This is a measurement of vascular stiffness. These people are all healthy according to all available lab tests and clinical assessments. But by using iAge, we were able to predict who is likely to suffer from left ventricular hypertrophy and vascular dysfunction. Professor Furman says that the tool can be used to track someone's risk of developing multiple chronic diseases by assessing the cumulative physiological damage to their immune system. For example, age-related frailty can be predicted by comparing biological immune metrics with information about how long it takes someone to stand up from a chair and walk a certain distance as well as their degree of autonomy and independence. Furman went on to say 
that using IAGE, it's possible to predict seven years in advance who is going to become frail. And he said that leaves us lots of room for interventions. 2013, a group of researchers studying aging identified the now famous nine hallmarks of aging. I will cover them now briefly. The first is genetic instability. As we age, our DNA repair systems become less efficient. This results in small chromosomal errors that can add up and eventually lead to disease. The second is telomere attrition. Each time one of our cells divide, a telomere gets a little shorter until eventually these wear away completely. This causes genetic instability. Epigenetic alteration. As we age, environmental factors such as diet, pollution and exercise can modify our epigenome, slowly making it less effective at reading our DNA correctly. The fourth is loss of proteostasis. This is a decline in the quality of the proteins that keep our body working effectively and efficiently. This results in cell damage. Our body does have a natural defense against this damage and it's called autophagy. But with age, this system also becomes less effective. The next hallmark of aging is altered extracellular communication. All our cells need to talk to each other all of the time to make sure that everything is working correctly. But as we age, our cells start to have problems with communication. This can lead to them making bad decisions about regulating our hormones, controlling our hunger signals, and even controlling our sleep cycles. The next is deregulated nutrient sensing. Our bodies have a built-in nutrient sensing system whose only job is to make sure we're eating enough healthy, nutritious food. But as we age, this system too starts to break down and has difficulty determining what nutrients we actually need. The next is mitochondrial dysfunction. The mitochondria are commonly called the powerhouses of the cells. But over time, free radical damage degrades our mitochondria and less energy is produced, making our cells slower and more lethargic. Then there's cellular senescence. To keep our body refreshed and young, our cells constantly need to divide. When a cell can no longer split itself into more cells, it's called cellular senescence. Autophagy is the body's way of clearing out these dead cells, but as we age, our body stops doing this as efficiently as usual, and zombie cells start to pile up. And the last one is stem cell exhaustion. Stem cells are blank slates from which all our cells are created. All other hallmarks of aging, as well as environmental factors, eventually lead to stem cell exhaustion. This is when the body is unable to replace stem cells that have migrated, differentiated, or even died. Fewer stem cells means less regeneration, meaning we start to show the signs of age. As we know, age-related immune system dysfunction is not one of the nine hallmarks of aging. Professor Furman stated, it's becoming clear that we have to pay more attention to the immune system with age, given that almost every age-related malady has inflammation as part of its etiology. A malady is another word for disease or ailment. Professor Furman closed by saying, if you're chronically inflamed, you will have genomic instability, as well as mitochondrial dysfunction and issues with protein stability. Systemic chronic inflammation triggers telomere attrition, as well as epigenetic alterations. It's clear that all of these nine hallmarks are, by and large, triggered by having systemic chronic inflammation in your body. I think of inflammation as the 10th hallmark. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. I find it interesting that Professor Furman believes that inflammation should be the 10th hallmark of aging. And if the IH clock can subjectively measure inflammation and can predict frailty out to seven years in the future, I think he's got a point. Unfortunately, no date yet as to whether this um, as to when this eye age clock will be available in much the same way as DNA methylation clocks are available. Uh, I'd be interested to know in the comments below whether or not you believe inflammation could be 
the 10th hallmark of aging.